if you want people to get like better at stuff, you gotta remove the stress so that they can like think. Now people say, oh, you need stress to get better. If you're training that, if you're training, you know, response to stress and managing it, but if you're trying to train a skill that's maybe new to people, you gotta make it manageable for them and isolate it. Now this isn't super fun, it's not exactly sexy, probably doesn't make good Instagram content, but this is how you get better. Don't just meander, you're meandering. Alex, <laughs> you're meandering. You're just sort of like, move, move. You're just sort of like meandering and you're sort of like dragging your foot. Put your feet where you mean to put them. Place your foot, place your foot where you chose to be. Now just, don't just go where the wind blows you. Put your feet down, right? Get up off your heels. Now if people get too comfortable, then they start doing, they start just kind of going through the motions. We don't want them to just go through the motions, right? Be deliberate. Time, other guy. Do you know the main problem with people's footwork is, is it's too big. They do everything so big. Because it's scary, fighting's scary. If me and you are gonna punch and kick each other, and I'm thinking you're gonna punch me, I wanna be like, oh, yikes, right? And then everything's so big, or you see this old MMA school striking program, the drive-by, yeah, uh, uh, uh. I go, one, two, sidestep, this, not, like she's just gonna stay there, and that's what cracks me up, is they'll teach this stuff here, bop, bop, boom, with this huge step. That's the equivalent of y'all teaching this, like, this stuff here, and the guy just stays there. Like, I'm gonna go like this, and Ty's gonna stay right there, and then I'm gonna come back across like that. Good footwork is small footwork, right? Inches matter. This is a game of milliseconds and millimeters. Small details, small movements make all the difference because our, our goal in, in the big drastic movement, we're trying to not get hit, but we have to hit. You have to stay close enough to hit the person. So we use this here to improve our footwork. Nice job, guys. That, that's awesome. <laughs> I get it. Hands up, hands up, hands up, hands up. Guard tight. So how do we do this? Well, we put it right there. On the flow. Yep. And me and Natalia take up our space opposite each other with this circle. And when, when you, if you normally stand like this, there's versions you can make it, but for clarity's sake, when I'm teaching this to everybody, we start from here, because the lesson is not exactly what movement patterns you use whether you're stepping and pivoting or sidestepping, that doesn't matter. What matters, what we're trying to impart on you is that you're not gonna move your feet far because we can scientifically prove that it doesn't take much to go from completely missing a punch and if I take, don't move. She wants to move anyway because she already knows the deal. If I step here and step here, now I can touch her, all right? Same thing here, step, step. Now I can hit her. Ew. Yeah, <laughs> Ew. In my mouth. Side gross. <laughs> Made a noise. <laughs> what we often try to do is when Natalia goes and takes her angle, step, step to hit me, is we go big. That's cool. I definitely didn't get hit, but now I'm out of position to do anything back. And then everyone moves so big, they get so exhausted. That's why the higher level of fight you're looking at, the closer they are to each other. Glory style kickboxing, they're standing like, they're standing like this. <laughs> so what we would do here in class is I would, I would lead the dance for a minute, then she would lead the dance for a minute. And we're isolating the idea of not moving our feet far. So for this, we just pick, uh, I will step pivot, and she matches, or I will sidestep, and she matches. Technically, we're circling with both, I use step pivot and sidestep just as a shorthand for our fighters. So if I'm saying sidestep, I'm probably meaning this way. I'm saying step pivot, I mean that way. Towards the, it doesn't matter. Whatever your footwork is, whatever you call it, if I move this way, in order for her to not get hit, I step a little bit, I step a little bit. And now we're right back where we started. And if I step this way, yep, yeah, and this way, and what that does, it fixes two common errors with the footwork. The first is when we go this way. This one's pretty common. People will go like this, they'll get this part kind of right, and then they'll take this leg and go like this right here. The problem being, if I had a partner here, and you don't move, if I step, and then I step, even if she was frozen, 
in time and space. I'm, I put myself out of position. She doesn't even have to adjust to be in position to throw a kick or a punch right here, and I'm out of position. So too, when we go this way, the big mistake will be boom, and then bop. Do you know the reason? Do you know the reason that people do those two things? Mm -mm. You don't know this? No. You don't know this? Maybe when you say it, I'll know it. <laughs> I'm gonna be mad, you're gonna be mad at yourself. What are the two main reasons that people mess up? They're scared and they're lazy. Bingo! <laughs> Thank you, scared and lazy. That's the two main reasons you do this. So what, how does that translate this? Why is that this? Because in our minds, I think if I go like this, I'm really out of the way. And maybe in a vacuum I am, if you can't keep continuing. A lot of times in an amateurish exchange, you'll throw your little two or three piece, all right? And I'll do this and then we'll kind of meander around and go again. When in real life, if she throws her little two or three piece and I step myself out of position, she should be right on the gas and attacking. Boom, boom, bang. I step and, and if I'm lazy and slow with my feet, she should be right on me, all over me. That's the, that's the cowardice part. I was trying not to get hit. Here's the reason it's laziness. If I go like this, My leg muscle will get really tired, whereas if I meander, right, that's easier. You're loading your skeleton instead of your muscles. We did the class today, everyone's legs were aching and burning if they were doing it right. All the lazy bones doing this, because walking is essentially pitching your weight forward, falling, and putting your foot under you. So they're basically doing that. So it's because they're scared and lazy. So I'll lead the dance. I step, I step. She's got to match me. She's matching my energy, whatever I'm doing. Right, she's getting used to not moving her feet too much. Then we do a, a, a round where she leads the dance and I have to match her, all right? You're gonna be better at this than me. Yeah. So Y'all like, how's she better at this than me? Well, because it's rules for thee, but not for me. I don't do the drill. I designed the drill, walk around. She's really good at it. She's the one that does it every week. I don't do it. Then, uh, as we get better, we start moving around a little more emphatically. I'll lead the dance, right? All right, boom. Boom, what happens here? You might get away. People start, start moving too big and too much, but they're gonna be out of position and can't counter. Keep it small. Then she leads the dance, right? Boom, thank you. She's been, more, she's been a little more predictable now for me. I appreciate you. She was actually helping me out. She was not doing what she would normally do because she didn't want me to look dumb on camera. Thank you. You're welcome. That's fine. Um, then uh, we add gloves. What this is doing is giving you like a pressure-free opportunity to run through all the layers of defense. You know, like you moved your feet, and then that helps you defend some, and then they move their feet, and then it didn't help, so you, you had to move your head, and then you might have had to add your arms, and then you might have had to cover up, and you run through the layers in order. So now, be very, very careful that you keep in the spirit of how we've been practicing, right? Now both of us can punch, right? And I guess you could call it sparring. There's a method of training like this where we both do this. Put your foot in there and nobody can move and we beat the absolute dog shit out of each other. That's fun too, we'll do that maybe Saturday, right? But we're gonna be a little more scientific about in the pocket fighting and try to use, find, try to find advantageous angles and see opportunities to answer back. And also see where we are leaving opportunities. You can still fight fire back, you can still fire back. With the height disparity, you're gonna lose this drill. This is Kobayashi Maru, you're gonna lose, right? But if you can manage this, right, then when you're free, when this is gone, and I say do your thing, right, and you can manage the small, then you can add the counters, right? So it's just, it's just a little limiter, right? It's just a little parameter. If you can get good within this, then when I take it away, you'll be better. But yeah, you're gonna lose that one. <laughs> James was like, uh, for this drill, like, what am I supposed to do here? And I was like, oh, lose, for sure. For sure you're going to lose. <laughs> we don't want to turn this into sparring, because then we're not isolating the thing that we're practicing, but we do want to contextualize it. Shout out Revgear. Revgear uh, hooked us up with these S5 all-rounders. We recently did a review on it. Natalia's were gross and disgusting, and we had to do a video on them, so they sent her a new pair. Thank you guys so much. Uh, it supports the channel a lot if you support the people that support us. So links in the description below for the gloves. But... What I want to do is I want to make sure, come here, I want to make sure that I'm pressuring her a little bit, but not, you know, put your gloves down, all right? So what I'll do now is when I'm leading the dance, we'll start slow. I'll step, pressure, 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 all right? Step, pressure, pressure, pressure. She's getting reps. 
I'm getting reps of, of angling and footwork. She's getting reps, not just of practicing footwork, which we're isolating, but also doing it in conjunction with realizing the range. Like she's now realized that she can be a lot closer to me than she realized, right? So step, boom, 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 boom. Boom, then she would go. She would leave the dance. I would say, oh, I messed up. I mean, she got me right away. As soon as we went, as soon as we started. Oh, see, she ran me in the right hand. She gets practice of running people into the right hand. She gets, we get to practice these things in relative safety. Then we just pick up the intensity. We do the same thing. I'll leave the dance. We're kind of moving around a little bit. And I want, I want her now to also defend. Like head movement, parry, stuff like that, right? If it looks bad, don't worry. We'll take it out, right? Okay. okay. Shh. Shh, shh, shh. All right, yeah. <laughs> But in sparring, that would have been disastrous. Yeah. But now you just learned in here. There you go. Boom. Without having to run away. All right. And then she would lead the dance, right? Yeah. I didn't move my feet. She did. I got double jab. Pop, pop. Then we graduate up to both of us going. And essentially, it looks uh, something like this. All right. All right. You got me. There you go. There you go. Yes. <laughs> so we get the opportunity to really know that range without having to worry about. And if if the Italians beat me up too bad, she's wrecking me, and I'm just I can't I can't. She got the footwork. She's angling me. I can always just go like this, and she can't. She can't go past that, and it just puts a limit. Good. <laughs> I would call this a. Uh, like also a diagnostic, like this style of sparring, you're diagnosing. <laughs> Good job. Chin down. Chin down and, and uh, turn over on that right a little more, Mark, and probably go. Okay, Alex! <laughs> Alex! Good job, man! <laughs> <laughs> it's a, a really good opportunity for like the newer guys to like get to do stuff that is not going to happen for them in sparring. The downsides to this are passive people will rely on leaning back to avoid. Aggressive people will rely on leaning forward. Yeah, leaning forward and reaching because we're not in total danger. So it's just a method of practice, not the only one. But give that a try, and you can do this solo. You know, this can really sort out your footwork. It doesn't have to be that. You can put put a glove on the floor. Put a glove on the floor and just work around that. Step, pivot, step, pivot, side step, side step, step, pivot, step, pivot, side step, side step. Scientifically speaking, that's as far as you need to move your foot. Each time, that exact distance. So step, right, boom. That's it. That's all he has to move. So you just go step, 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 step. That's it. That's all he has to move. It's like, how do we know that? Because small. Yeah, small movement. Small movement is important because that's what we're fucking trying to not get hit by. Guess what? It's that. It's that right there. So if he does that side step, boom, boom, this misses. Don't move. That's how I step. It misses. So all this like capoeira shit that we're doing in boxing class doesn't make any sense. So we're going to make the movement small. Even if you're a bladed fighter, you kind of need some practice of keeping your feet organized and in order to keep your rear hand in play. A lot of times, I mean, you can stand real sideways. If we were like kicking and practicing another thing, this is fine. I'm not saying you got to do this. Or they're like... You're saying we have to stand square and we get hit in the body, but no, I'm saying if you want to practice moving your feet and keeping your hands in play and staying in the pocket, because staying in the pocket is not just about being tough and stupid. You know what I mean? Like, so I'm going to stay even a little bit bladed. I still want to keep my feet organized and keep these movements small. And even if you want to be completely bladed, it's still small. I'm trying to isolate and avoid this. And you know what's funny? People be like, I don't do that. You do it. You do it. Everybody does it. Yeah. They get tired. They reset and they meander. Right? They pretend they're moving their feet. Or they pretend that they're moving their feet correctly. The old amateur shuffle. <laughs> galloping around like a little pony. Or meandering like this. That's what we're trying to avoid. 
All your other stuff is cool. Do all your other stuff. It's fine. But uh, just put something on the floor and practice deliberate placement of the feet, not just going wherever the wind blows you.